Hi everyone, today is a perfume video and we will be talking about two powerhouses. These are the big daddies, they came to play, they are powerful, large and charged sort of scents. I'm talking about Aura by Mugler and Carnal Flower by Frederic Mao. Both of those are total hard hitters, so this is good for you guys. Those of you who bask in having extremely powerful, uh, interesting, and uh, statement fragrances. Let's start with Aura Mugli. It is a very interesting, very creative scent, very distinctive, and you will not find anything like it around easily. Uh, the bottle is interesting. This is not my style of uh, of uh, perfume bottles. But again, this is very distinctive. You right away look at it and know exactly what it is and who it's by. I like that the emerald color is consistent with what the scent presents as uh, when you actually inhale it. To me here, we're talking about, let's be honest, a green vanilla, which is a little bit of an interesting twist on the formulation already. Um, it does rely on some rhubarb. It does have some interesting notes to it. For instance, lots of different woods in the background, which uh, truly supports the fragrance and makes it uh, very, very stable and uh, projecting hardcore over a pretty decent period of time, many hours. We have white wood, sandalwood, amber wood, oud. There is an oudy quality to it. Uh, they do not list it, but um, if you're inhaling and analyzing the fragrance, I would say it would remind you of a fragrance with oud in it. It is very long lasting. It is pretty powerful. The throw is considerable. So I would use uh, Aura about the same way I would use Angel sparingly, very, very sparingly, not to suffocate yourself and people around you. Um, if Angel is very heavy, Aura has a bit more lift to it, but not in terms of um, not in terms of density of the scent. It's extremely dense, but it does have some f bizarre freshness. There is a very minty quality to it. I would say probably spearmint, but bitter slightly uh, in combination with this vanillic undercurrent, which is very also very prominent. It is curious. I'm not sure where exactly, what, what combination of ingredients is creating this particular smell, but it's almost medicinal, which is very, very intriguing. I would probably, if I was to reshuffle the names in the lineup, I would probably call this one Alien. It's, it's both obviously styled that way, but also it smells very alien. I think the name would fit perfectly in that regard. There is a lot of green forest in it, but all of that is heavily powdered with some kind of a medicinal apothecarian minty powder, maybe maybe a tooth powder, you know, when people used to use tooth powder to brush their teeth. If you smell that, it's a similar situation here. The fragrance leaves the bottle and settles on your skin in a bizarre way. The first, 30, 45 minutes of how it lives on the skin are not really representative of its entire range. And does it ever have a range? There is a huge journey that the scent is taking you on. So if you are a fan of those very morphing um, and storytelling scents, then this guy might be for you, especially if you're, if you're okay with Bizarre. The cozy vanilla and the menthol, um, polarity of the scent is quite intriguing and isn't done in a distasteful way, although definitely very unique. I don't think that men should walk right by this fragrance. You should try it. It's, uh, it's quite a journey and I think it would sit well on male skin as well. To be fair to the wearability aspect, after the opening, after maybe an hour, it settles into something a little bit more conventional, a little bit more commercial, but you do have to live through that initial, whoa, strange sensation, maybe 
for some people that's their favorite part of the scent. For me, it certainly is my favorite part of the scent because it is where the story is most interesting, is most intriguing, and you are looking forward to know where it's going. Um, I wouldn't wear it for fun, but it's a nice olfactory journey. I personally would not actually own this particular scent because for me, wearability is very important. But as an adventure, I think if you like fragrances, you should try this because it is, in fact, an adventure. It might not be your adventure that you want to repeat, but it certainly is interesting. As to who I might imagine wearing this, someone pretty odd. Perhaps this person is a bit odd. If I was to make a reference to um, RuPaul Drag Race, if you're a fan, you will know this is a Utica scent. That's who I really am picturing when I'm thinking about this perfume. Utica would wear this and it would go with all her weird outfits perfectly. It's definitely a character with somewhat of an unusual taste, unusual view on things. Uh, someone who's rather quirky, uh, someone who is an original thinker, um, probably out of the box thinker, artistic, adventurous. I enjoy the scent. As you can tell, I am a, a fan of unusual experimental approaches, especially in mainstream perfumery. People do not really experiment much, and Aura is certainly that step out of the box for mainstream, which is kind of what Mugler does best. Mugler does um, alien-esque, bizarre, cool, interesting, questionable, uh, fashion and their scents are kind of like that as well. They they really stay true to the vibe of their house uh, and I believe that Aura is a very integral part of that particular vibe. And if you like that sort of thing, you probably will benefit from trying it. The second fragrance I wanted to talk about is Carnal Flower by Frederic Mal. This is a far less unique um, unique fragrance, but nevertheless a pretty powerful player. This is for you lovers of tuberose. There is tuberose uh, to the nth degree that lives here, and that is really what the carnal flower part of it is. Carnal flower is tuberose. In general, tuberose is meant to convey sensuality, uh, mysteriousness, and uh, mystical, magical female powers. That's kind of historically where that scent lies. Frederick Mao was composing it with Monsieur Ropillon, Dominique Ropillon, yes, Dominique Ropillon, uh, who is an absolute legend in the world of noses. And this was definitely a labor of love. They are touting that this particular fragrance uh, contains a much larger dose um, amount of tuberose absolue, the essence, say, of tuberose, uh, than any other fragrance on the market. At least that's what they say. Generally, tuberose tends to play up um, almost tropical um, undertones, and you normally would see combinations of tropical fruit, maybe coconut, maybe star fruit with the tuberose because those smells tend to go together in nature. And in the best tradition of this kind of approach, kernel flower is shaded with some fruitiness, which gives it a rounder, more substantial appearance and uh, presents the tuberose kind of on a platter of fruit. Why I chose um, these fragrances to be presented together is because of this medicinal freshness that they both present. In the case of Aura, it was a spermant apothecarian situation, and here we have camphor. Again, that kind of an ingredient will give the fragrance a little bit of a lift, although this is also a, a heavy hitter for sure. It is not a shy scent or scent for the faint of heart. A part of the slight greenness and citrusy undertone of the tuberose, there isn't much else that is going on in this fragrance. The rest is support. Really, it's an ensemble of instruments that's playing pretty far away to support the, the grand dame, the tuberose, in all her glory. The sillage is huge, the fragrance lasts forever, 
you apply it and the day later, a day later, two days later, you probably will still sense it on you. Therefore, just like Aura, even more so than Aura, it does require careful application. Please be mindful, it is a beast. I would say it's very much a unisex scent. Actually, Cardinal Flower for me is just as much of a male scent as it is a female scent. It is sexless, it's nature smelling and not leading in any particular direction. There is a wilderness and power of, about this fragrance that is quite apparent to me. Normally tuberose has some creaminess to it. In this case, the green definitely um, definitely overpowers the creamy aspect of tuberose. However, uh, dun, 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 it does come out later. So if you like the creaminess of tuberose, but a little bit, um, you, you feel a little bit intimidated by the powerful green undertones, you will feel that milky, yummy, creamy sensation really um, appear maybe hour five of wear which again tells you the whole story and you begin with something a little bit more harsh, a little bit more um, powerful, demanding, commanding, and then it mellows a little bit into a pretty straightforward, creamy, lovely tuberose. It is quite masterful how it transitions from clear, crystal, cold, green, um, harsh presentation to this more mellow, more creamy, uh, more warm and kind tuberose layer. There is a huge journey and you go from one end of the spectrum to the other with this scent, which is amazing and absolutely a, a novel. You find a novel here. There is a bit of untamed wilderness that you get in the very first couple of hours of wear. That is something that you don't see a lot in modern perfumery and it really warms my heart to know that there's still interest in that going forward for some noses. In terms of a person who might be wearing this particular scent, I do lean more masculine with it, at least upon first application. Um, we are I would be thinking about someone rather introverted, serious, a figure who knows who they are and aren't afraid to present that to the world. Perhaps someone with the tendency to dive deeply into things and concepts and perhaps a bit of a disdain for human race, but somewhat of a synergy with nature. It is not a friendly fragrance and it is unlikely to be universally accepted as a wearable perfume, for sure not. So the person I'm thinking about is rather aggressive, um, they know what they want, they're abrupt, yet there's a lot of depth and thoughtfulness to them. Therefore, you can see why I reviewed these fragrances together. They tell similar stories in a way. Uh, perhaps with Aura, it's a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more uplifted and quirky, a little bit more playful. Uh, whereas Carnal Flower is the same person, but maybe 15 years later. There is not much playfulness left there. There is just soft self-knowledge and life experience, uh, which is beautiful, obviously, but uh, not accessible. Neither fragrance really is an accessible choice, not in terms of being able to access it. Obviously, you can order both of these fragrances if you want to, there's no problem with it, but it's never going to be a universally liked scent. Therefore, neither of these puppies are there to be gifts. I think if you are buying this kind of scent for a gift, you better know that, that the person you're buying for enjoys this particular perfume and has used it before, because otherwise you will have a raised eyebrow and uh, your gift receiver may not invite you to their birthday next time. But in general, both of these are fantastic and truly composed with soul, with thoughtfulness, and with a lot of grace. There is real sophistication and grace in both of these scents. Go check them out. Definitely do not buy before trying, and I often say that for all perfumes because really it's true for all perfumes, but I especially emphasize it for perfumes that may be offensive offensive to a notable minority, notable demographic, and these are that. 
Let me know what powerful, unique storytelling sense you have in mind and what you might think is a similar vibe to the two that I've presented today. Write it down below. We're all curious. The conversation is always there for you and for me to have and to discover new things when, when it comes to perfumery. That's it for today. See you later. Have a good day. Good luck. Take care of yourselves. Take care of other people around you and stay safe. Bye-bye.